What is going on, people? Today, we're going to talk about getting rich in America and how income inequity plays a role. And this is probably going to be some very controversial things. This is some of the stuff that I have looked at, some of the things that I've come up with. So it's not going to be your normal economic talk. Uh, been doing a lot of research on the economy. There's the broader, bigger economy. And then there's your personal hustle, hustler economy. And frequently those two kind of stay separate. But what happens is that people kind of get caught up in the economy and lose their minds. All right. This is Glenn Cameron, founder of Hustlers Kung Fu University where your real financial education begins. We talk to you about how to make money, how to build generational wealth, how to fix your credit, how to start a business, all that stuff. Be sure to spank that subscribe button. Now, the thumbnail that I use is a hand that's plugging in a worker, and the worker's not plugged in, right? Part of getting rich in America is learning that you must leverage time, resources and money you got to leverage that and you cannot think nor act like a poor person and get rich in america this is where the income in inequity comes from is you have people who have jobs who want to have more income bigger incomes better incomes without adding more value to their situation. So write that down. If you want to make more money, you must add more value. That's really it. How many of you are on the journey of coming out of your money deal? Let's see. Well, how many of you are on the journey of going from an employee mindset to a business owner mindset? Throw that off in the comments. Because this is one of the things I see. Like I, I spent a lot of time researching, watching certain things because this is the thing. The stock market is at an all-time high. Unemployment is at an all-time low. Lowest it's ever been. Food stamps. People are, you know, two million people have come off of the food stamp ro rolls. So from a topical surface view the economy looks like it is booming it is going crazy and if you don't have a job you're lazy if you're not making the money you want to make too you a bum now if we peel back those numbers let's take the uh, food stamp numbers the reason that so many people are coming off the food stamp rolls is they're imposing requirements that weren't there before just because you came off the food stamps doesn't mean that your situation is remarkably better uh, the job situation, that is trickeration at its best. There are more jobs created. Unemployment is at an all-time low. But you have people who have one, two, three jobs. I mean, these jobs that are created were not enough money to support one person. So it is true that there are more jobs that people are being employed, but you're an Uber driver, you're doing Uber Eats, you're delivering for Amazon, you're doing Thumbtack, you're doing all this stuff, and neither one of those things will support you by itself. That is a fundamental economic problem. Also, after so many months, people have stopped looking and they're no longer counted because I guarantee you, if everyone who was underemployed or unemployed was counted, it would be close to 20% or over. Another signal, the Waltons, the number of people who are living with their parents. That hasn't gone down. It's gone up. Uh, the number of shared housing situations, that hasn't gone down. It's gone up. Uh, these are people who are not related, who are putting two, three, four incomes to buy a house. It happened in California. That's been like that for, for years. It's been like that in New York for years. But now it's spreading to other areas. Also, the living wage 
hadn't increased since the 70s. So to put that in terms that you can understand, that if in 1970, if you were making 100 k a year, adjust it for inc- you know, inflation and stuff, because there is inflation. There is inflation. Inflation is real. I'm going to explain that in a minute. That you would need to make almost 400 grand to have the same standard of living that you would have had with 100 k in the 70s if you were making money today. You'd need to do almost 400 grand to have the same standard of living. Now, where's this inflation? It's like inflation's not there. Well, this is where the inflation is. Uh, I have this big screen television. Uh, if you follow me on Facebook, you'll see there was a picture of me doing like my Conway, mess, Conway, Conway, Kanye West moment where I've got my YouTube channel on my big screen television. It was funny. That television was 1500 about three years ago. I can get a better television, bigger, more features, better clarity for half. The deflation has been happened on consumer goods. It's happened on cars. It's happened on uh, clothing. It's happened on this. But the stuff that you really need, like food, gas, milk, you know, the stuff you really need, it's been going up. It's been going up. It's been going up. So with these things in play, you have the trickeration of an economy that looks like it's doing really well. But when you look at the reality of the people in the economy and you peel back all these layers and you find that the people in the economy are not doing well. So sooner or later, those realities are going to mesh. And that's when we're going to have another correction, because it is just like 2006. Because, see, you know, it's like it started in 2007. They really started in 2006. Uh, People were still building these subdivisions, all these subdivisions that like were partially built and they just stopped because the banks ran out of money right now we have a similar thing like they are throwing up apartment complexes in my neighborhood like crazy now i i will say here because i've lived here since 2011 that they didn't stop building they slowed down but they didn't stop so uh, this is a bubble that is kind of unusual and unique but when you look at you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes outside of Atlanta. You see the real America. You see the people who are struggling. You see people who are driving cars 10, 15 years old. You see people who are making 30, 40 grand a year as a single person because their household income is a trickeration. And part of all of this income inequity is that people do not fundamentally understand how the economy works. Just because the stock market is doing well doesn't mean that you're going to do well, but there is an inference that because the stock market is doing well that you should be doing well. It's not true. Um, What happened is that there's a handful of people who are doing amazingly well right now, yet there's a lot of people who are in economic pain, and it's not getting any better and but you have these issues on these things on the on on television like hey you know the stock market's doing well unemployment's all the time low um two million some people came off the food stamp rolls so essentially you're sitting there like well what's wrong with me what's going on with me and the thing is and i know that you don't want to believe this but it ain't your fault you've been lied you've been fed a you know napoleon said this History is a pack of lies that are agreed upon. So right now we have a situation of economic prosperity that's agreed upon by the government, city and local states. Yet when you look at the people and the condition of the people, it's not a congruent vision. And I think we have one of the, in the first times in history, the compartmentalization of economies. And I think in the next recession, you will have economies that will continue to do well. They will. Not like the last economy, because but the thing is, the people who are going to get really, really hurt this time are the people who can least afford it. These are people who are already on the bottom rung of the ladder, and it's going to be devastating for generations. Now, how do you get out of this? How do you 
make moves? How do you set yourself up how to get rich? First of all, you got to understand the economy. You cannot be a typical bystander. And like right now, I'll give you some stuff because I'm going to get in here and I'm going to light these guys up later after this stream. Uh, someone that put out that every after Christmas, every year that Bitcoin plunges. Now, this is an economic. We're not going to even get to Bitcoin. This is one of the things that you must understand for that premise, that theory to be true. Economic conditions must always be the same. And I'm going to give you an economic condition that is the same, and it's been like this for years. During the summer, retail sales drop. Why do retail sales drop? Because mom and dad have little Johnny at home eating them out of house and home, and they don't have extra money. So during the period of time when the children are out, many Americans experience a depression in their income because they got to find activities for the kids to do. They have to buy more food. Their air conditioning is running up. These things do matter. So they don't have as much money to put into the larger economy. So little Johnny, little Susie, Jill, they all go back to school in September. All of a sudden, the economy starts moving again because now the parents of little Johnny, Susan, they have money to put into the company. They have money to buy stuff. Then, oh, October comes, goes up again. November, Christmas, then January, we, we, little Johnny's parents don't have money again, so it drops again. Then what else happens? Oh, refund season. Economy picks up again, goes on and on and on to around May, June, and what? Little Johnny, little Jill, they're out of school. This has happened at least, I have charted this for the last 18 years. It happens like clockwork. So if you have economic realities that are based upon those fundamentals, then you're going to have the similar results, right? Bitcoin doesn't have any of that. Um, Bitcoin, its first six years, really didn't do much. It didn't really start acting a fool until institutional investors came into it. And once again, if you're going to have a premise that an asset class is going to have a certain behavior year after year after year, you have to look at the macroeconomic things that are going on because that will influence the price of Bitcoin. It will. These things don't exist. Bitcoin doesn't, smell, doesn't pass the pedestrian wealth building tool test. There's a handful of people who are going to make crazy money off Bitcoin. And this will go on for years. But you? Nah, not, so, not, not, not so much. Because uh, the game isn't built for you the way that you are economically. You can't play this game. I traded bitcoin i didn't do it for real i paper traded because i don't know if i could have exited my position soon enough but i, I, I paper traded bitcoin for about 30 days and i could have made 500 to a thousand bucks if i could have exited my bitcoin position every day at the right time but you can't because the network won't allow it and the fees are too high so it's a lot of stuff that's going on but if you want to apply something like let's take apple now, Peter Lynch said these fundamentals, and I, I, they still hold true to these days. You find a good company that a fool can run, and it will still do well. You don't look for a company that's going to take magnificent management skills because I mean, magnificent managers, they come and go. They won't be there for the long haul. You need a company that has created a certain company-wide doctrine of what they're going to do, where they're going to make money, whether there's a fool or not involved. That's what you look for. You look at the management team and you look at the company. You look at what the company's doing. You look at what the company's putting out. Most folks just look at the stock price. They don't look at the company. They don't look at the management team. They don't read the K-1s. They don't look at none of that stuff. They just, it's doing money. I'm good. I'm good without their research. But when you do the research and you start looking at these things, it's a different ball game. Now, how do you, Joe Citizen, escape this? First of all, hold on. Uh, you're going to have to do some radically different things. 
You cannot do, you can't save your way into the next economic class. It's not happening. You're not going to be able to um, work a part-time job into the next economic class. It's not going to happen. It is pretty much like a rocket taking off or a plane taking off. You're going to have to have a high burn rate for a few months or a few years to lift you out of the economic lower class that you're in because that's the only way to get out. If you don't get out or if you don't get enough lift, you may get out for a minute, but because you have bad financial habits and stuff, you'll slide right back into it. Like all of these basketball players and these football players and these NFL players who never were groomed or had any education on financial its fundamentals because if someone like I, I'll go ahead and say Greg McElroy he was the University of Alabama quarterback really smart dude he stayed in the league about four or five years got that league minimum which is about 2.5 million then he rolled off into an ESPN commentator position which pays like 300 to 500 thousand so Greg leveraged his college career at Alabama into millions of dollars he's still relatively i don't think he's 30 years old i gotta look at it but he's still a young guy and because of that leverage and being smart and knowing that i'm not going to be in the nfl i'm not going to be a starter in the nfl i don't have the tools he programmed that he set himself up for success because in the first 10 years you know people still make more money in the NFL, but after a certain point, once he gets in the ESPN, like uh, Desmond Howard, Desmond Howard's been there like almost 17 years. He's made more money from ESPN than he has from playing ball. But once again, these gentlemen, they knew the game and they prepared themselves for it versus saying, I'm going to be a football player for the next 15, 16. That's very rare. It's very, very rare. And for you, you've got to look at your economic path out. You've got to um, figure out something that's going to get you where you need to go. All right, so what I'm going to do for you people, because we're going to talk about a lot more. I'm going to put this up here, and what we're going to do, we're going to do tax layer. Uh, unfortunately, I was working on some client stuff today, so I did not get a chance to do any of this. So what I'm going to do is bring this down here because uh, we still got a chance to get in. And I'm going to be talking about, let's see, 136. Whoa, whoa. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what that was about. Save changes. Ah, okay. I know. Get out of here. All right, there we go. Make sure that we are. There it is. So that's Tax Slayer. I'm going to go ahead and put that under there because I'm, I'm going to also get into some other principles here in a minute. So you, you definitely want to get the tax layer because there's going to be some things I'm going to talk about in here. Oh, there we go. I need to edit the video. And I'm going to put tax slayer deal. This will be during the video and a little bit afterwards. So go ahead and grab that. It is now under there. Let's make sure. Yep. So that is under there. So with that, let's get into the, the chat room. Savelta Gibbs, what's going on? The Sheiky Jones, Goleen, Tone Lee, Fard, Stefan, Cody Wyman. You starting that journey, Dashiki? It's a long one. Uh, let's see. What am I? I have to. All right. I think that'll chill out in a second. What's up, Apex Tanker Green? 
uh, regular mind, regular web guy. I have a business mindset. Apex stock market next. I'm starting that journey now. Marquis, Jacob, what's up? New vision. Subglenda made the changes two years ago. Real estate in the bakery. Awesome. What's up, Farrell? I look for business every day. Uh, Fart. My job has an influx of those people. What kind of people, Fart? Stefan, from employee mindset to business mindset and employer mindset, hoping to use automation to augment employees instead of replacing them if possible. What's up, Jasmine K? Pedro, I was treated this, uh, I have treaded this territory quite a bit. I am balancing work and the family business at the same time. I don't want to elect the organization that provides the paycheck. Any advice? You're just going to have to hustle. Uh, Tanker Green, except for black men, are still at 40% unemployment. But they don't want to be here. Apex, amen. AJJ Pool. Peter Schiff just said that last week. Many people gave up looking for jobs or just unemployed. 20% actual unemployment rate. I mean, when you look at the conditions of the people, you know, you forget all the news headlines and you look at the people because this weekend, I spent all weekend looking at stuff, digging at stuff. And when I saw that food stamp number, and I realized that a lot of people were being thrown off the rolls who are still suffering. What's up, Johnny Walton? Uh, Cody, I agree it's a problem. I'm a thumb tech, and even though I'm getting a bunch of leads, yes, their new students count is going up gradually, but I'm diversifying. I have to. What's up, Certified? Seattle. What's up, Michael Hubbard? Tony Lee, yes, the labor stats are bogus. What's up, Michael? This dude bakes, what's up? Far, I remember reading the mail needs to make at least 21 per hour to live in America. Hmm. Oh, no. I mean, once again, I've, I've studied this. What's up, Apex? Uh, consumer products go up during the deflation and inflation. They never go down. That's the trick. Oh, uh, there's going to be pockets of people who will not be impacted by any of this stuff at all. Ron Haley, every time I say in the conversation, I get told to stop being so negative. People don't want to know the truth, man. They really don't. Oh, there are plenty of jobs, but most of them don't pay enough for you to live off one. Powernomics. Uh, it's only I live in the Bay Area and the real estate market is still high. Oh, California, New York, Austin. There, there are certain markets that are still just going to be very legit for a while. What's up, man? Can Enterprises. Sure thing, man can. Run highly 500 plus electric bill in ATL every, every August. Go solar. Stock market showing good numbers. And see, the thing is, the stock numbers are real, but that doesn't impact Main Street America. Nathan Justin, you said about sales training is something that helped you immensely. Is there any? Uh, I'm going to be doing some later on that. You definitely, you need to start preparing now, Sardek. Warren Buffett said you want a business that a monkey can run. Pretty much. Uh, I talk about gold and silver in the tax layer course. Uh, I will. Uh, let me see. Waffle House is a great business. I enjoy being behind the curtain. <laughs> kind of like Michael Jordan, Shaq, and Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley has officially been a commentator long and he's played ball. Uh, another is give a man a dollar and see what he does for they forgot what that was on. Oh. Black Knight Colon back at it again. Uh, Vision Point Media, yes. Uh, to start into the sales, to commission sales job, is will leap you two 
to five classes ahead of your peers. What's up, Aunt Banks? Uh, not only is the food getting more expensive, it's getting smaller. Uh, let's see. Jasmine, can I change my spending habits? You're going to have to. Eric with old countless meetups in Central Texas doing user left Instagram telling folks been unemployment for years. Chris Mo, the new class conflict. Uh the Wayne Bryant. Hey Glenn, I'm new to investing. What like and I would like to know what kind of information would you just for beginners? Make more money. And I'm not being flippant about that. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute as soon as I finish the shout outs. Uh Sensei Snow, ever since I wrote your goal for this year, you've been off and running. I told you, uh, I, I teach what I do. I don't teach what uh, I don't do. All right. Uh, thanks, Michael. So he, here's the thing. This is what you got to do. You got to, one, be rooted in the world. And this, this is going to sound kind of religious, and it's not going to sound kind of religious. You have to be rooted in the world to know what's going on, and you have to know at what numbers to really look at. Because whenever I make my analysis, I look at that number, but I always go, and this comes from having a resale business and seeing people. If I had been in a position to, you know, well, I was in a position to predict it, I didn't really care. It was like making money. I remember when this guy came in and he bought this bunk bed set with these pissy mattresses for his two daughters because he was getting divorced and he needed some place for them to sleep when they came to visit him and how he laid off 13 employees um this is going to be really really hard for many people to hear white men in america are never going to resume their prominence nor position now i say that not to be mean not to be flippant i say that to let you know just how dire this is White dudes are losing, and it ain't, and they ain't coming back. They're not coming back. Like you know, like uh, light skinned dudes went out and they came back. Dark skinned dudes, no, it ain't happening. This is a irrevocable social shift in economics, in power, and in policy. We're, they're not coming back. Now, to illustrate that, the white male was the top of the food chain. And he has been toppled. This has been going on for years. This is part of the reason that Trump's in office. It ain't going back. So where do we go when the prototypical alpha white male is now living in a one bedroom apartment, paying 1800 bucks a month child support, can't see his kids because he's always working. That was America. That was the dude. That was the hope. That was the dream. It's gone. So what's next? Uh, let's see. Going through the big D right now. <laughs> it's rough, man. So you, you got these guys who were the apex of American economics. And this shifted. Now, part of the power transfer happens through divorce. It's a big, you know, it's a big shift in policy and it's a big shift in money because you take money from one person. Because, I mean, seriously, most males don't spend a lot of money. They just don't. So you take money from a male who doesn't spend a lot of money. And you give it to a female who does spend a lot of money. It keeps things going. Um, the beta male policy effect is real. We need more beta males who will sit there in that apartment, pay that child support, and continue to do it because it is a social narrative for them to do that because they keep a lot of stuff going. Now, if you uh, want to escape this and you want to be out of this, you cannot be a beta male. You've got to be, um, I haven't started the channel, but you've got to be a disruptive male. You've got to be someone who's going to challenge the system. Now, here's the thing that's really, really bad. It can't be too many of you. <laughs> because if you, there was a lot of, if there was a more me out there, 
the system would crumble. So it, it's a it's a really strange, strange situation because beta males are needed to keep things running because there is no other system in place. So when I tell you this stuff, I'm telling you all. Aj J. Pool, white men are really losing. I just can't believe you actually said that. I miss your channel. <laughs> it's true. And the thing is, if I said this five years ago, when it was happening, I would have had so much pushback. I'm not going. I'm not even worried about pushback because they know. Why do you think so many dudes are going mid toe and all this other stuff? Uh, let's see. Since we just had a meeting at my job, they're closing the doors two years in two years due to losing the contract. It's real. Uh, yes, the dynamics have totally shifted. Uh, far is it women? Or are they going to be next to experience power? No. I know that's going to sound crazy. I'll get into that in a minute. Gunji, I voice single moms with children like the plague for that reason. <laughs> That's me. Purpose pit. Middle aged white males are dying of opioid doses and um, suicide rates is all time high. That's true. That's something I actually researched this weekend. Michael Hubbard, you can't stop the browning of society. I mean, that, that is the thing. Uh, everyone cannot be running things. That's truth, um, is she, uh, Agent J. Poole. Nope, it ain't gonna be women. All right, oh, let's let's just deconstruct that. We had Hillary Clinton, who is probably smarter than most of us. I mean, seriously, she's a smart chick. And they pulled a Negro, Barack Obama, out of nowhere. He became president. Um, she ran against Trump. She got beat again. These United States of America are not ready for a female leader. If they're not ready for a female leader at the top of the top of the food chain, because see, this is what happens. When you have a Barack Obama become president of the United States, that creates a trickle-down effect of, oh, I can be the president. It's actually possible. So all of these millions and millions of little brown boys have been impacted, and they're like, I can do this. Which is the reason the Trump situation has come up because that's the Trump is like my personal opinion. Trump it was put in place because he's a useful idiot. He's like the rogue agent that thinks he's running rogue, but he's run a program. And I am not wishing anything on the president, but I feel that if he becomes too rogue, he's going to get popped. Once again, I'm not saying you know pop you know Trump, but I'm just saying what I've seen what I feel could happen. And as long as he's running rogue the way they want him to run rogue, he'd run reckless. But the minute that he starts stamping on the wrong toes, something's going to happen to him. And I think he's getting there because he ain't playing the game the way that they thought. It's kind of like when John McCain picked Sarah Palin as his running mate. And when Sarah Palin realized like, oh, what? I'm up here? Because see, Sarah Palin, she was down here. You couldn't even see her. Sarah Palin got up to this. Sarah Palin's net income, net worth went from 60 some thousand dollars to almost 20 million. You think Sarah was going to sit in the corner? You can't put baby in the corner. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Sarah was just like, I'm doing this. This is about me. And, you know, she's developed a following. She's developed wealth. So the thing is, when you have a bull in the China shop like uh, Trump, Who's unpredictable? He's probably gonna get out of the pocket. Well, once again, let's go ahead and look at who elected Trump. If the people who normally don't vote came out and voted, he won the one. All of these white men came out in droves, and they got their white women to come out in droves, come out in places they normally don't come out. Oprah's not going to be president. Um, just my opinion. And I'm going to get back into the topic. 
I like for my president to have been the governor of a state before taking over the United States of America. You know, it's kind of like, you know, some training, you know, handle a state. And if you look at it, the most successful presidents have been governors of states. Cheat codes. Oh, wait, man. We, we, we're going to get on it. Um, it ain't going to happen. And this is why far it's not going to happen. It is not in the nature's woman. It's not in the woman's nature to be alpha. Many women could go into surgery, engineering. They don't. Why? Because of the hours are long and hard. They don't want to do that. It isn't that they're not capable. That's the misperception. They just ain't wired like that. They don't want to do that. So um, it's going to be, she ain't running. Why is Oprah going to mess up her life? Oprah has more power, more impact, and she doesn't have to worry about all that stuff. Now, here's the, the thought process that you must start to employ. You must learn to think for yourself. Like what I'm telling you, you can go ahead and Google it. You can Google it. You can do this research yourself. You can, you know, you can find out because I'm looking at this stuff because I see these people potency like the, you know, the job numbers, they're so low. And I'm just sitting there like, but the condition of the people is so bad that that just doesn't match up. And when I start to really piece up the pieces, I, I think we're on the precipice of another correction. Which sounds implausible. The job numbers up, the people are coming off of uh, the food stamp rolls, real estate's at all time high. It is just too good to be true. Now, one of the first things that you must do to prep yourself for this is you have got to get a handle on your money. You cannot be just spending money like it's going out of style. You've got to essentially live like an indigent person and grind like a millionaire. That's what you got to do. That's to create this escape. Because the thing is, trying to leave your class is so hard because you have social clues that are imbued in your personality and into who you are as a person that are hard to shake, which will prevent you from escaping your economic class. I mean, this is why personal development is so important. Personal development is necessary. Personal development is a mandate. <laughs> uh, so that, that's the thing. And far, you know, it's a wonderful thing that you're telling your daughters that. But see, this is something else. And this is something I tell all my friends with kids who are kind of living in blinders. There's what you tell them to do. And there's what you do. And that's what they follow. So you're telling your daughters to do all this stuff, but you still treating women the same old way. They're going to look at you and go like, yeah, dad said this, but dad does this. They're going to pay way more attention to what dad does than what dad says. And I'm not saying you're a bad dude or anything like that. I'm just saying. So now one of the big things is to leave your social class is you've got to get used to being alone. Most of your friends are not even trying to come with you. And if you bring it up, you talk about it, they're going to dissuade you. They're going to hold you back. They're going to put up roadblocks because they're going to see, you know, they're going to be in the rearview mirror. They're going to see you leaving them. So and none of this is conscious. None of this is conscious. This is the social narrative that has been imbued in people. So they're going to try to hold you back like, man, you work too much. Why don't you come hang out with the folk, pop some beers, which on the weekend here and there, there's nothing wrong with that. But every weekend, that's problematic. Another thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to become a ninja with your money. I don't care if you're earning 800 bucks a, a month now. You need to be a ninja with it. You need to get as much out of that 800 bucks as you can. You need to be Mexican with your negotiation skills. If they don't break that price down, you take your money and walk. Oh, man, y'all are going in. Uh, now, one of the things that you must do, and this, this, this happened to me, 
I was a hardworking person. I worked two, three jobs. And there was just always this period of lack. And what I didn't understand was it wasn't my efforts were wasted. My efforts were good. It's just my efforts were directed in the wrong direction. Because, you know, I was married. I had two kids, a wife. I went to work. I went to my part-time job. I was a good, solid man. And I was living on the currency of being a good, solid man versus living on the currency that put cash in my pocket. Many of you are living on the currency of being a good person. This is why a guy will pay child support for a kid he knows isn't his because he's like, well, somebody's got to take care of that baby. The thing is, he doesn't want to be labeled as a deadbeat dad, even though the kid isn't his, because he goes on that currency of being a good man. He'll be able to say when he's 65, yeah, I know that boy wasn't mine, but I paid for him. I took care of him. Mm hmm. Yes, I did. I was a good man. I was a good man. And he will get those props. But you got to make a choice. Do you want the social currency of being a good person, being highly thought of? Or do you want the power and respect that comes from economics? Once you, you know, I'm an asshole. I have people like, I don't, I mean, this is the funniest thing. And you can look for it. It's on Reddit. There's someone trashing me. And then someone's like, you have an unnatural hate for this dude. And one dude's like, he's an asshole or some other stuff, but his stuff's on point. I want that. I don't care if you like me. I gave that up. And once you get out of being liked and you want to be respected, and you don't have to be nasty about it or anything like that, but your life will change because socially you're on the path of being liked, of being fitting in that is dimming or dampening or eradicating your economic possibilities. So you, you've got all of that stuff going on. Now, first of all, you got to center yourself. You got to like, okay, and ask yourself, what do I want out of life? And for many of you, you don't know. And that's not a problem. Very few people know because we're taught to be thankful for what we have and not to ask for more. That's part of social grooming. So you sit there and it's going to probably take you a minute to figure that out. Social responsibility is how they keep you in beta mode. Pretty much. This is what I'm saying. There can't be too many people like me. But for you, I mean, the channel's small. There's not a lot of people here. But one of the things that you have to understand is you've got to plan for your life. And this is something anyone can do. If you don't have any money, you can still do it. If, you, if you're going through a divorce, you can still do it. Um, I, I'll, I'll speak on a subject that many of y'all know. This is one of the reasons that the mods are here. Um, I have a person who likes to come in. And when that went down, I was very, very hurt. I was betrayed. I was lied upon. All of these things happened. And one of the hardest things for me to understand and to accept was no one cared. No one really cared. I had a few people, a few friends, but in the grand scheme of things, no one cared that Glendon Cameron was hurting because Glendon Cameron is a male. Glendon Cameron is a 6'1", 255 pound male. Big joker. Clearly, our sympathy, our empathy should go with her, regardless of the evidence. That was mind blowing. And I said, okay, this is a trip. This is wild, but it is my reality. And once I accepted it as my reality, because it was at one point I fought against it. I was like Don Quixote tilting at windmills. And I was like, this is it, bro. She won. Round one. She won round one. She won the first battles. Kicked my ass. But see, I looked at this as a war, a multi-year war. And I said, OK, they were ahead of me. What can I do? How can I think? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve steps ahead. Because I, I don't like the taste of defeat. And I'm just all up in my mouth. So in my pain, I was able to think. I was able to come up with a plan that, as you can see, based upon her nuttiness, is working. Because she'll never get any money out of me that I don't want to give. Small victory, you know, in spite of losing your kid, but still. We take our victories as we can get them. And then 
There's some more steps that are going to come that will be realized, and I'll be made whole again. In the midst of your pain, in the midst of all the bad things that are happening to you, you have got to be able to focus and to think of the future. Uh, many people act like there is no future. Many people act like nothing good is going to happen, so they just uh, tap out, get addicted to drugs, become an alcoholic. All these are symbols or uh, symptoms of a lack of hope. And for me, I've been groomed to be hopeful even on the darkest, darkest day. And that's not no religious dogma. It's just a faith and an absolute unshakable confidence that I will win at some point. And you guys have got to pull that out of wherever you got to pull it out of because the economic trickery that is going on right now is ridiculous. You have people, well, it's not ridiculous when you understand people. You have people who need for this to be true. Whether it's true or not, they have a need for it to be true. Uh, how do you keep up momentum? Honestly, I feel that I could end up in the boarding house any day. That keeps me running scared. Uh, Andre Kelly is maturity as well as accepting responsibility. Of the man, sometimes people will get offended. People will get very offended about your grind. Along the way, I had many women that I were dating romantically that tried to knock me off of my grind. There's just like, well, you, I had this one. She's like, well, you make enough money. Who are you to tell me how much money is good enough for me? Where does this come from? I went off on her. And she was just like, I was just saying, it's like, look, you know, you need to use better language than that. Don't come at me like I make enough money. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know that I actually slept on the fucking street. Don't tell me I make enough money. And uh, shortly after that, she was gone because I just, when you get in the way of my grind, I see you getting in the way of me living and me breathing. And there's no place in my life for people like that. And I've had a lot of them try to knock me off because it's like, you know, I'm a, I'm a decent dude. I got a few things going on for myself. But once again, as we were talking during the live experience, that security issue is real. Tanker Green, wow, that's why I'm with a woman with four kids that are not mine. I don't want to be with, because I don't want to be a dick and leave her hanging. Those social narratives, those social clues are super, super strong. Tanker Green, that's just real. And the fact that you can articulate that and be honest puts you on a better path. Because it, here's the thing. You can have the life that you want if you're willing to pay the price. Now, part of it is with all this economic trickery is knowing what the price is. Which way should I go? Should I start a Shopify store? Should I start an Amazon store? And once again, this is some more economic trickeration because ask yourself these questions. You are really good at Amazon. You're making millions of dollars. Why are you going to invest the time and energy and in marketing into creating more competition for yourself? And I've heard all this, like, I'm not creating competition for myself. I can't have it all. The way that Amazon's going, if you give up your best secrets, you are creating competition for yourself. Because the one number one competitor in the room is Amazon. If you have a product that does really well in Amazon with their data gathering abilities, you're going to like, oh, yeah, this is it. They're going to get it. They're going to undercut you and they're going to push you out unless you have a product where you own the patent or the trademark on it and they got to come to you. Otherwise, yeah, they're going to do that. So part of this is you got to get real. You've got to do some things that may seem a little crazy, like um, you may have to hide money from yourself. You have to tell yourself you don't have money when you have it because what happens is, and this is a law of nature, and I'm not going to get too spiritual, but when you already have money, it draws new money. When you go through this cycle of boom, bust, I have money, I don't have money, I have money, I don't have money, you make that cycle a habit. 
develop the habit of having money. You can hold on to like 1500 bucks. Hold on to it for a year. You'll see changes in your life. I'm serious because that money will draw more money. But if you're always getting rid of your money, spending all your money, you will never have any money. And you'll be that person who's 65, 70, 80, 80 years old in a nursing home living on a pension wondering what happened. Zola, good evening. You can be scary, especially with the possible correction. Been here long enough to have seen prior predictions come to roost. Oh, yeah. I'm usually way early. I was early on the Amazon thing. I was early on the storage auction thing. I'm like really early. This is why I sound like a crazy person. Like, Glendon, the stock market is at an all-time high. Glendon, the unemployment's the lowest it's ever been. Glendon, people are coming off food stamp rolls. Glendon. The economy is booming. Trade deficits, all this other stuff. And I'm just like, but why are so many people still suffering? Because, let's, you know, there will always be poor people. But why are there so many college kids who can't find a job? Why are there so many college kids who are living with their parents? Why are there so many adults who don't know each other shacking up? Why, you know, and I, I think we will really see it. And I didn't look at this, but hold on. Let's look at this together. The divorce rate. During the last recession, the divorce rate went down because people could not afford divorce rate 2017. Uh, let's see. Just kind of seeing if it's going up or down. Uh, let's see. Let me ask a better question. Up or oh, someone's already <laughs> wants to know this stuff. Uh. Oh, my, 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 my. Divorce rate in U.S. drops to nearly a 40-year low. This is 2016. It dropped to a 40-year low. Uh, the divorce rate is a canary in the mind. You think all these people are staying together because they want to? They're staying together because they have to. They have to. Now, there could be some more stuff in there. Um, I'll look at this a little later. But based on what I just said, in the Great Recession, the divorce rate went down because people could not afford to break up. And it's now low again. Lowest has ever been. So when you look at that kind of information, and you know what to look for, you know what questions to ask, you realize that the United States economy isn't as good as people think it is. But with people and speculation and thoughts goes the way of the economy. If people think it's good, they'll work hard to make it good. But it ain't good right now. The divorce rate is at an all-time low. Uh, that's something I should have checked earlier. So that is one of the things. Uh, Barong Pants. We're in the third longest economic expansion. So 120 months was the longest. We're at 102. A recession is coming. So you, you got that. But we're, we're in the position where something's going to happen. Uh, this is reason that I've made steps with my personal finances in my company. I currently have no personal debt and I'm probably going to keep it like that because when things go bad, your money goes five, 10, five to 10 times as far as it does now. So uh, I'm t doing direct marketing, uh, direct response marketing. I am not telling you anything that I am not doing. 
Uh, homelessness rose in 2017 for the first time since 2010. Divorce rate going down low. Homelessness is going down low. They've changed the policy on food stamps. That's where people are leaving. They're not leaving because they they found these new fancy jobs that makes them ineligible. Policy changes. America is going to be much meaner under Trump. Uh, they're getting rid of, ed- you know, when I was in school, there was this thing called a children's theater. And we would go and see these wonderful plays. And it was awesome. It was really awesome. And it shaped me as a person. They're getting rid of the arts. So you're going to have a bunch of heartless people with no empathy. There's a lot of stuff that's going on. JC Sanchez, what would your advice be when you're doing so well financially, but your good close friends are not? It's kind of weird in a way. I would keep my mouth closed. I would listen to their stories. I would pat them on the back and I would commiserate with them. I would not let it be known that I am doing well financially. I would keep my mouth shut. Andre Kelly, you talking about me with that money cycle. It's, I'm talking about America. So many Americans are in this position that they don't have to be because, once again, let's talk about you need to have millions of dollars uh, set aside for you to retire cushy. Let me give you the Glendon Cameron retirement plan. Cars paid off, house paid off, some money tucked away, plus a business that is still up and running. An active business. This is why I've made these moves. You know, I'm in this for like the next 25 years. Now I'm in here for the next 30 years. So a lot of things that when you're trying to build a business super fast and you're trying to meet all of these short term projections so you can get all this short term profit, they don't exist I can build this company appropriately. I can build this company debt free and I can keep it in a certain situation. Man, y'all are going hard. Um, Tangeri, I'm willing to work and live in the semi tractor for one year out in the oil fields in North Dakota or Midland, Texas, making two fifty, six thousand a week, but she's holding me back. Mom and these are one. One of my husband's friends told him his wife says she would she should leave him and get an apartment every week. She is a PO officer and they have two kids. She said she stays and just rolls her eyes at him. Fifty K don't go too far. Y'all saw I'm I'm gonna put this up here again. The divorce rate. It is the lowest it has ever been. If that doesn't smell like a recession, I don't know what. You think these people all of a sudden are going to counseling and getting emotionally healthy? No. They realize that they cannot leave and keep the lifestyle that they're accustomed to. These be facts. All right. So uh, one of the things that you got to do is become a rebel. And not a rebel without a cause, but a rebel with a cause. And your cause is economic enhancement. Everybody needs minimum 10K in the bank. Not in an investment, not in your RA, but 10K in the bank. That's your attitude money. Then you need to be working on a larger fund or a business fund. Because what I see happening is I see a lot of homeless people. Because whenever I see homeless people, I take note of that. Um... I feel that we as a country, if we just took a little bit of money from the war budget, because make no mistake about it, these people are homeless because they are mentally ill. Most homeless people are mentally ill or substance abusers. Uh, find a camp, put them all there together, uh, forest trees, give them some counselors. It wouldn't cost a lot of money. It costs a lot of money at all. Now, why doesn't this happen? Because we as a society don't have the collective will. And this is something that is going to be very, very rough for many of you to understand. The minute that your value in your family diminishes it is the minute that you will see who really cares about you. 
and it can be soul crushing. Some of you are not even going to want to accept it. Some of you are going to make up excuses for it because once your financial utility disappears, whoo. So, no, she's living off. Wow, tank of green. You got a lot of stuff. I mean, the big thing is you got to make more money. You, you got to level up. You have to look out for yourself. You have to create because let's talk about getting rich. When, when I say rich, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Big house, nice car, college. That's what used to come to mind when I said rich. When I say rich now, it is freedom. <clears throat> it's options. I can live in a house. I can live in an apartment if I want to. Uh, I can stay in Airbnb every night if I want to. I got those kind of options. <clears throat> options are everything. Also, I understand how the game goes. There is the 1% rich. You make 280 grand a year. You're in the 1%. You can have a nice car. You can have a nice house. Your kids go to private school. You still can be struggling at that level. So when I say rich, it is a life of privilege. It's a life of options. You need money to have options. That's what I mean when I say rich. And you, you have so many things that are going on with this country that are crazy, but we'll, we'll stick to the things you need to do. You got to get some more money. You got to learn how to be alone. You have to learn. You got to, you got to find, figure out what your purpose is. Everyone's got a purpose. I don't know what your purpose is, but you got to figure it out. You definitely have to figure that out because let's say you will go out and you get rich and you have no purpose. More than likely, you're going to get on drugs, alcohol, or commit suicide. You have no purpose. You're just stacking money, and it's empty. So once you get into your purpose, once you get into your proper mindset, and then you stack that money, it will be fulfilling. You know, <clears throat> when we had a live experience, you know, we had the gentleman here, we were talking. It was very fulfilling. And just to let you know, um, we're probably going to do every quarter. I'll announce when that's going to happen. Because uh, it's not going to go completely away. It's just I have to focus on what's working. There is money in anything that you know how to do well. This is another thing. You have to get rid of um, what I call trend chasing. Like, well, there's money in real estate, so I'm going to do money. There's money in Shopify stores, so I'm going to do Shopify stores. There's money in Bitcoin, I'm going to do Bitcoin. You got to let that go. Like, okay. Uh, like I said, when I light up these dudes on Facebook, I'm going to light them up with the real. One of the reasons that I can be objective about Bitcoin, I'm already rich. I'm not saying that to be glib. I'm not saying that to hurt anyone's feelings. But I know how much <clears throat> effort it takes to make a fucking million dollars. I know how hard it is to make $100,000. So I'm not blinded by this instant rich thing. Now, with Bitcoin, if you got in early and you're playing around right now, you can get very rich. You can make a lot of money. That's not going to go on forever. And I know that. And also, it doesn't kind of fit into the way that I like to make money. Because here, here's one of the things that harms an economy. When you have a company that, like all these people who got harmed by BitConnect, you took a lot of money that was spread out across the economy, right? And you took it and you concentrated it in the hands of a few people. That is not good for the economy. It's not. You know, you lost, you have people who lost 30,000, 50,000, 100,000, 500,000, just gone into the hands of a few people. That never benefits an economy. That's another, you know, and, and that's how a lot of people want to make money. This is why I don't teach you these scam stuff and all this other stuff. I, in in uh, Tax Slayer, I'll teach you some things so you can balance out, so you can make some money, so you can get yourself together. I'm not going to teach you any scam stuff. So there's a lot of stuff. Um, what time is it? Let's get into today's deal. All right. Um, 
<laughs> it's Tax Slayer. I'm going to leave it here at Tax Slayer. Uh, I'm going to work on disruptive money tomorrow, uh, writing uh, and some other stuff. Because essentially, a big part of what you need to do to be successful is not only to change your mindset. Change your mindset's good, but you got to get busy. You got to get really, really, really busy. You got to get crazy busy. You just can't be out here doing stuff without a purpose, without a rhyme or a reason. And you got to get out of what I call paying bills mindset. Do you know that many of you are conditioned to pay bills and do nothing more? As soon as you you got the mortgage paid, you got uh, the car note paid, you got Baby Joe some new shoes, you stop grinding. It's like, I'm good. Let me just stop grinding. And if you would look and chart your behavior and realize that you only grind maybe half the month, if you would grind the other half of the month, you would have more money. Many people only grind to fulfill paying bills and nothing more. People don't grind to start a um, company. People don't grind to stack money for generational wealth. Don't happen. So tax layer, we're going to get into some very different philosophies and some stuff I got to think about. And today, for a few hours after the stream, you can get in. You can get it for 136. The link is below the video because... I can't save everybody, um, but I can save a few. And if you join me on this journey, uh, this is how I got out of it. This is how I changed my economic class. I mean, I'll be real with you. It took me doing some upper level thinking to move out of my situation. Because, you know, I still don't even know where it came from. Hmm. I don't have a job. Hmm. I don't have any references. I can create a reference for myself. I created a whole company out of air for myself, and they asked them two questions. And there are people going, well, that won't work today. How do you know? Have you tried? A lot of companies don't do background checks. Did that reference check? Because here's the thing. If you look good and you check all the boxes and you get in there and your behavior is appropriate, they don't keep checking your references. They don't. You can probably get a good sales job with that method. If you are bold enough, if you're willing to risk a few things, you probably could. So tax layer, uh, we're going to get into some upper level game so to speak uh the fat cat secrets i should go ahead and say that i i need to work on that um that is situated where if you have a job you could save five to twenty five thousand dollars off of your taxes which means you could probably get most of your federal back or half 136 and you i mean it, it's it's just it's crazy what the value that will be in this bundle. It's not there yet, but it's coming. Because I got to get back on my grind. All right, so for those of you who want Tax Slayer, the link is below the video. It'll be available for a few hours. And um, I will see you guys tomorrow. And let's also, let's talk about a few things before I depart. Uh, big give tax layer, big ass discount on fat cat secret. I have not done that yet. So you can still get in there because that's going to be special. I just got to do some things. Um, uh, the live experience will go from every month and stuff to every quarter. I'll announce when that happens and there's going to be some killer stuff in these courses as we go out throughout the year. So. It's going down. All right. Because, you know, like I said, you got to understand the income inequity. And it's not because that there's a few people up here moving leathers. There seems to be the zero sum game that for me to have, you must not have. But it is rigged to a degree. It is rigged to a degree. And it's very insidious because if I'm a black person or an Asian person, 
and I'm making like $250,000 a year and I live in a nice neighborhood, I don't want my kids rubbing elbows with little poor little uh, Leroy's and Johnny because I know that that little kid doesn't have the same upbringing that my little kid does. That's every parent. It's not a racial thing. It's a class thing. And that's why you got to change your economic class. Because on my street, there's like three, four Indians, um, two Asians. I don't have no problems with them. Because they know I'm in their house. I'm in their class. I'm in their class. I'm all right. They probably don't even want other Indians who are not in their class around their kids. You ever notice how Indians are real funny how they hang out with? Like you'll see some of them who are all dark and you'll see some who are all light skinned. Class, cast, it's real. All right, uh, go ahead and get your copy of Tax Slayer Bundle. There'll be more stuff there tomorrow. Uh, be sure to get on the text notification squad. And uh, I will see you people tomorrow, 8.30. I don't know why I said 8.30, but I'm going to do 8.30. Because it's a struggle now for me to get up since I've been taking these weekends off, even though I really didn't take this weekend off. I just did a lot of soft research. All right, so I will uh, see you people 8.30 in the morning. So with that, I am out.